If you like learning about the theory and application of cocktails, then you're really gonna like today's episode because we're gonna get really nerdy on the equal parts sour. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna be doing things a little bit different. Whereas normally, we, I don't know, pick two or three cocktails and kind of really dive into them. What's gonna be different is today we're actually gonna be getting really deep into cocktail theory. And what I mean by getting into the theory is I'm hoping that through the course of today's episode, we can help demystify the equal parts sour. I think the best example of the equal parts sour is the last word, the famous and iconic cocktail. Now, most of us recognize the last word as the lost cocktail recipe that was resurfaced in 2003 by Maurice Stenson back when he was bartending at the Zigzag Cafe. The cocktail is iconic for what it is. It's gin, green chartreuse, maraschino, lime, all in equal parts, and the ingredients come together so beautifully and so in harmony that the drink is known throughout the world. And it's famous for good reason, because what that drink manages to do, which is four ingredients, is something that all of us should seek to understand, especially if you love cocktails. And one thing I do wanna mention, you know I take this episode seriously in regards to equal parts sours, because I don't know if you could notice, but I'm actually wearing my paper plain t-shirt. If you zoom in, you can actually see that there is literally an equal parts sour printed all over my body. Like the whiskey sour or the daiquiri, this cocktail features a spirit, in this case gin, and a hard citrus, which in this case is lime. By hard citrus, I mean lemon or lime, as the conventional oranges and grapefruits that you would find at the produce stands don't quite bring the acidity and the balance that you get from the conventional lemon or lime. However, unlike the daiquiri or the whiskey sour, the last word does not have any syrups or isolated sugar. Instead, it's achieving the balance against citrus through the form of liqueurs, which in the last word's case would be green chartreuse and maraschino. But that doesn't mean that any other liqueurs could be plugged in willy-nilly because the liqueurs being used not only balance out the citrus in the drink, but they also balance each other. By that, I mean one of the liqueurs in the drink is 55%, which is not only very high for liqueur, but also because it's relatively dry particularly in contrast to yellow chartreuse, it's much sweeter and milder counterpart. For example, if you were to replace the green chartreuse in the drink with yellow chartreuse, the drink would be overly sweet and way too syrupy. And in contrast, maraschino liqueur is over 20% points lower on ABV compared to green chartreuse. If you were to switch that into something, I don't know, like 40% like Grand Marnier, the drink would be too boozy and out of balance. And from analyzing this, you can see why this formula works so well, because you're taking a spirit, hard citrus, relatively dry and higher ABV liqueur with a sweeter, lower ABV liqueur. Now, hopefully, now that we've dissected and analyzed this formula, you can take what you've learned from it so you can extrapolate that and apply it to your own drinks. Now, sweeter and lower ABV liqueurs tend to be more common, they're easier to find. These pretty much covers everything from creme de cacao, to creme de banana, to most coffee liqueurs. But on the other end of the spectrum, some good examples of perceptively drier and higher ABV liqueurs would be things along the lines of Galliano Authentico, Genepi, Grand Marnier, and even Cointreau. So now that you know this, you can honestly just kind of start to mix and match ingredients and do your own equal parts sour. That doesn't mean that the drink will taste good because you still have to make sure the flavors make sense. However, you can go into it with this knowledge, knowing that the drink will at least be in balance. And just knowing that the drink will be in balance with itself is honestly one of the hardest parts of coming up with a, with a new drink of your own anyway. Now, hopefully you understand this formula a bit better. And the reason why I really wanted to take the time to make this video and talk to you all about this is because they like to make it seem like us bartenders are these flavor wizards that are like gaining inspiration from the gods on top of the you know mountaintops, when really a lot more of that is just understanding the relationship between the ingredients. And then when you understand the relationship between these ingredients and then you understand flavor and water content, all these other factors, it really allows you to better understand cocktails and to create better drinks and better original recipes. Now with that said, you could probably just start picking off ingredients that fit each of these categories 
and have some success with them. I mean, just off the top of my head, rum, Grand Marnier, vanilla liqueur, and either lemon or lime. I bet you you could make one of those and it would be delicious. I've never made one, but just from understanding the way that these ingredients interplay with each other, I know that you're gonna have some success with it. If not, you know, maybe a dash of bitters or something would go a long way to really bringing the ingredients together. But basically what it comes down to is, again, understanding these ingredients in relation to one another and how they'll play out in the finished cocktail. Now that we got the explanation, all the academic theory out of the way, let's go ahead and actually apply some of this in a practical application. And that practical application is a cocktail that I came up with called the Ninth Wonder. Sometimes when people find out that this cocktail is called the Ninth Wonder, they'll ask me, hey, is that named after the Diggable Planet song or after the hip hop producer? And to that, I just say, yes. To make a Ninth Wonder, first we're gonna start out with three quarter ounce lime juice, followed up with three quarter ounce creme de cacao, three quarter ounce ancho reyes, which again is a bit drier and rings in at 40% ABV. And the last ingredient is tequila, of which we're of course doing three quarter ounce as well. Now, one of you asked me in an earlier episode, like, hey, is Terramana paying you to feature their ingredients in a video? And the answer is no. I just feel so bad for the Rocky though. He just never gets a break. So I figured, you know what? Why not showcase his tequila on an episode of Cocktail Limelight? You know, so the guy can get a little shine for once. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some ice to my tin. Give it a good shake. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The ninth wonder, garnish with the lime wedge. Yep, I haven't had this one in a while, but it still slaps. Anyway, that concludes our equal parts tutorial today. I hope that some of you can take enough information from this to maybe apply it to your own drinks and find it a bit useful. And with that said, if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails with us, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast, which I host over on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else where podcasts are found. Now, with that said, if you liked what you saw, then don't forget to muddle that like and subscribe button. And also, if you have any ideas for what cocktails we should feature in the future, go ahead and leave it in the comments, and who knows, maybe we'll end up on a future episode. And now that we're done, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you again next week. Thank you.